Behind me is my super budget Newtonian telescope that is meant for astrophotography. It is the Quattro 150P from Skywatcher. It cost me a total of 450 US dollars and it came with this black thing, which is a coma corrector slash focal reducer, which is really nice because normally such Newtonian telescopes do not come with such accessories. So quite a complete package that so happens to kind of be not great out of the box. I mean, it kind of works, but if you've watched my previous videos, I'll put some links above here and in the description, you may have seen that I had trouble with the collimation, like a lot of trouble with the collimation, and I'm still having some trouble with reflections within the scope. Let's have a look first at some result image that I took on the Galaxy M63 to see how that looks like. So here is an image that I took after my latest uh, collimation and we can see this is actually around two hours of data and we can see that the shadow of the secondary probably is still there but is more centered and it is uh, less abrupt than before. So it is easier to calibrate out, but it's still not uh, perfect. So we still have reflections somewhere in the newt and we need to do something about this. And here is how the image looks like after we've done a dynamic background extraction. So it looks much, much flatter than I had in previous videos. That said, if here we apply a fairly aggressive screen stretch, we still have those reflections causing issues. So in today's videos, we're gonna try to remedy that. Okay, so we see that even though like the reflections can be dealt with, it's still better if I manage to really get everything nice and good and remove like the problems at the source, which is within the telescope. So it's in that spirit that I bought this uh, little uh, black ink, which is called uh, Shinkokushoku Muso. And it's somewhat uh, equivalent to black 3.0. It's a very black matte paint that doesn't reflect light. It was suggested by, by one of the comments on my original Newtonian video, so thank you very much for that. It seems to be doing the work great. Obviously, I will be putting links in the description if it's available outside of Japan, but also to Black 3.0, which should be available like outside of Japan. So what did I do with this paint? So first I removed the secondary mirror, uh, and this is so that I could have access to all of the bolts that hold the secondary mirror in place. Uh, I noticed while removing the secondary mirror that the secondary mirror has by default scratches that are below the top level coating. Thank you Skywatcher for providing uh, secondary mirrors with scratches. They're very faint, they probably don't affect anything with imaging, uh, but they're there, it's a bit annoying, And but I'll just let it slide. The secondary mirror uh, back and sides were already painted black so I didn't have to do anything on that front and I'm leaving it alone for now until I get a replacement spider in the near future from Backyard Universe. I'll get to that once I receive it and of course make a video on that. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it. You can also join the channel, join my Patreon, leave a comment, like the video, etc, etc. So I painted those four nubs here, at least the parts that would intrude into the light path of the Newtonian from their shiny and chrome type of uh, re very reflective color to this very matte black paint. Just saw that I missed a spot, so I'm gonna add that. Obviously, this is very much an arts and crafts project. And after I bought the paint, I realized that I didn't have paint brushes because I'm not an arts and craft type of guy. So I did everything with my fingers that are slightly darkened now, not a big problem. Where else could I be getting problems? One of them was the focuser draw tube that I just removed. It's very easy to do so by loosening the four screws on the edges of the focuser. Once they're loose enough, you can just pull the tube out. Make sure to not have your camera attached while you do that. Otherwise, it's a great recipe to drop your camera. Don't do that. And there is part of the focuser draw tube that actually like uh, pulls into the telescope while it's in focus. And the normal color is this very silverish kind of color. We don't want that. And so I painted it black to avoid that. Another thing that I painted black 
is the end of the comma corrector slash reducer because that part also protrudes in the light path. And in particular, the threads, the M48 threads inside for filters that I'm never going to use ever, they were very reflective and shiny. So I painted them dark as well. And I'm not sure how well this is visible, but within the telescope, there were some nuts that hold uh, the focuser in place as well as the finder uh, in place and those were not painted over so I painted them over as well. So that's the extent of the painting for now and I don't know how much of an effect it's going to be but it's not difficult, it's not dangerous. I mean uh, painting the threads on the coma corrector was a bit nerve-wracking and I hope that humidity doesn't make like the paint drip onto the glass later on. Fingers crossed. And now the time has come to flock the inside of the tube. I made a video about flocking uh, and not the other word that is not good. <laughs> and that also starts with F, flocking the dew shield of my Hyperstar telescope using this kind of adhesive uh, felt kind of layer. It seemed to work very well and I will also use that for flocking the inside of the Newtonian tube here. Again, if you're interested in the flocking paper, links in the description. So my next step will be to remove the primary mirror. The primary mirror fixed in place by just four screws, Phillips head screws, super easy to remove. So you just need to be careful to not drop it while you're doing that. After I remove the primary mirror, I will blot out the white areas that I saw with black paint and I will flock the inside of the tube. And flocking will just be like putting this adhesive paper all across the tube wherever I have access without, of course, uh, intruding in the path of light and the most important areas to flock are around the primary mirror so you want to have like the the end of the tube that's around the primary mirror flocked well and also behind the secondary mirror so if we have the secondary mirror here facing uh, towards the Newtonian here in the tube we want to put the fl flocking paper behind it so that the light that gets towards the secondary mirror and might actually like pass through does not get reflected back uh, inside. So those are the two areas that are the most important to flock, but I'll be flocking the whole inside of the tube and we'll look at how well this worked once I get access to stars again because we're getting almost into a rainy season in Japan. Not a fun season to be in. We're done and this is how it looks like. So it's actually difficult to focus on the tube itself because it's so dark, but I flocked the entire tube. I painted a little bit with the um, paint that I had like where I can flock easily or where I got too lazy to flock and then we can replace everything and see how well it works. Oh and while I was at it I also added electric tape where we have like this crease on the telescope tube where the tube is actually built because I've heard it could be a source of light leaks as well so why not cover it. I placed back everything, the spider, the primary mirror, this is how it looks like and I think it looks pretty good and really, really dark inside. I don't think we can get too much darker. Of course, I did a quick recollimation and, and there's also one thing that is important to see is that this coma corrector here, I should not have painted the outside. The layer of paint made it sufficient that uh, it wouldn't fit inside the focuser tube anymore. Uh, so the tolerance on that is very, very low. So I'm happy I did paint the threads inside, but I should not have painted the outside, just so you know. Now, now I've put back everything including the dew shield, the camera, the electronic focuser, everything is ready for imaging again and we'll see how effective all of this flocking and painting things around has been. I've been just in time, uh, rain that wasn't on the forecast is starting to fall, not enough to be a problem right now but I'll soon be covering this, obviously I have the uh, cap on. So yeah, Newtonian telescopes, uh, if you're not getting something like the Vixen R200 SS that I never had to collimate, I would not recommend that for a beginner. So that's going to be painful. Now, what are my plans for the uh, future of this telescope? One of the things that I had seen when I imaged M63 I is that towards the end of the night, my collimation was no longer perfect. So I lost collimation by just slewing across the sky. And so what I did is I took Backyard Universe on his offer to actually um, 
provide me with a new spider and also a mirror uh, mask to hide the clips on the primary mirror, which will help me have better star shapes at the cost of a little bit of focal ratio, but also with a, a thicker spider vein that holds the secondary mirror in place, I should be getting a better diffraction kind of spikes that look nicer but also I should have a more stable collimation. Guys, I'm a bit giddy with excitement. We're inside. I did another run on M63 Galaxy and it seems to be working. The painting and figure painting and flocking and but plugging of the newt and also electric taping and all of those modifications seem to have borne fruit. And of course, the collimation as well. Let's look at the results. This is the image that I obtained uh, yesterday night. This is another two hours of 120 second exposures on the M63 uh, Galaxy. And my first thought when I looked at that is, hey, it looks like my standard light pollution gradients from Tokyo. I'm familiar with that. That's something I know and I know how to deal with. So I first uh, rotated the image so that it would have the same rotation as my original uh, image, which was uh, this one, more or less the same rotation. And uh, then I removed the stars, applied a quick dynamic background extraction, and already like the background looks very, very flat, right? And finally put back the stars in. Background is super flat. Let's do a very aggressive auto stretch. And the background is still perfectly flat. And my smoothing factor for the dynamic background extraction was the standard 0.25. So I didn't try to fix any sharp gradients as I had in the previous image, which means that it seems to be working. There is one parameter that I couldn't control is the position of the moon and how full the moon was and how close it was to my target. So we are actually having less moonlight for this image. So that could explain the difference. But honestly, I don't think that's the whole story. I think that reflocking the telescope, painting those knobs, uh, painting the threads of the coma cor corrector, um, the butt plug of the telescope, the electric tape, uh, the dew shield, the good collimation, all of them worked together to create this uh, quite flat image once we apply DBE. And one of the things that I'm really impressed about as well is the star shapes. Like in the center, they're good. In the sides, you can see they start degrading a little bit, but this is an APS-C size sensor on a $450 telescope that included the coma corrector slash focal reducers. This is F3.45. And the stars on the corners, like all things considered, they look perfectly fine to me, especially at that price. So now finally, I managed to make this little budget newt great, as far as I can tell. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. I'm going to be having so much fun using it. If we quickly look back on the image, the only thing that is kind of left is those weird star spikes. These are mostly down to the mirror clips, the, the small three clips that hold the primary mirror in place. And so in a future video, I will be using a, a mirror mask and also maybe a new spider, a secondary mirror holder from Backyard Universe to really like fix those last issues. So if you want to see that, make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, maybe even join the channel or join my Patreon if you want to have access to, as some Patreon ranks have access to my videos early and without ads, if that sounds interesting to you and if you want to support the channel. But overall, I am super pleased with the enhancements that I managed with the scope. Yes, it was hours of work. Yes, it wasn't is it easy. Yes, I had to buy some cheap stuff stuff off of Amazon from paint to flocking paper to collimation tools. But in the end, it seems it was all worth it. Uh, I'm so stoked. Whew. Ah, I'll leave you with this uh, pure uh, moment of excitement and joy on my side. Um, so as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.